Hey everyone, James Reeves with TFP TV. You're watching GunFest 2021. We're bringing you your favorite manufacturers, their new products for 2021, because you know, we haven't had a whole lot of shows lately, unfortunately. This is the format we're doing, so that way you guys can still get the info. Check our playlist. Also check out TFB TV Showtime. It's our show dedicated channel. We're gonna have a GunFest 2021 playlist there. You guys know who I'm with, it's the boys from Blue Forest Gear. Guys, introduce yourselves to the audience. Uh, I'm Stephen Hilliard, a Director of Product Development. I'm Chris Seislove, Director of Training and Education. And what do we have here today? We've got a new slang from Blue Forest Gear, which is what you guys are known for, right? Yeah, so for 2021, we decided to uh, branch out and uh, diversify, and we're launching an entirely different kind of sling from Blue Forest Gear. Uh, we've developed a, what is usually known in the industry as a tail sling, and uh, the first question your viewers might have is, what the hell? Blue Force Gear has been saying for years that tail slings are bad. Well, despite that fact, what we found is a lot of our customers, or would-be customers, are still using tail slings because they like the uh, additional range of adjustability. And so what we've done is we've created a tail sling that uh, eliminates the worst problems of tail slings. So on a closed loop system like ours, on a Vickers sling, once you adjust it, size it to yourself and the gun, in my experience across a large variety of shooters with different body types, once all that's complete, you're going to get somewhere between 11 and 14 inches total of adjustment. You know what I mean? Um, because you're not getting any sort of tail fodder when you use it. Uh, tailed slings are pretty popular uh, because, well, for a number of reasons, but one of the kind of benefits or drawbacks, depending on how you look at it, uh, with a tailed sling, it doesn't require nearly the amount of finickiness to size it properly to you, your kit, the firearm, all that stuff. Because the more you pull on that thing, the more adjustment you're going to get out of it. You know, so even if you got five feet of tail hanging off of it, you did what you needed it to do. So in this case, go ahead and get up on target. All right. So now, with no adjustment at all, reach down and grab this tail and start yanking on it. Is it tight enough now? There we go. All right, so we could probably take it still a little bit out of the back. But we didn't really, we're not gonna have to do much, but you see at full usage, he's got all this hanging out of it, which is not a big deal. The, we put kind of this blocker on the bottom, folded it over, sewed it up, so that at least hopefully with that extra weight on there and extra form factor, it's not gonna find its way where it doesn't need to be, all right? And then when you wanna come out of it, grab onto this swage ball and pull, and there we go. Okay, so it's, it's called the GMT sling, which is short for gimme tail, um, because you know some shooters just love tail slings, so we're good to go. So go ahead and get back up on target, and then reach down and yeah, find that, find that thing and start pulling, and it'll get you where you need to go, all right? Mm -hmm. Cool, with almost no adjustment to the sling, uh, as far as, you know, it didn't take us nearly the amount of fitting and timing as it did with a closed loop system like the, like the Vickers sling, all right? Mm -hmm. Cool, but still, because I don't, you know, this would drive me freaking crazy. All right, pull it, pull it back. Give me, some, and we'll try to. You can take the rifle off. We'll try to pull some out of the back here. But it's the same deal when you're adjusting even a tailed sling. Is adjust that adjuster mechanism somewhere in your workspace, and then, and then do your adjustments so that when you put the rifle back on, whatever you took out of it or added to it didn't change the fact that that adjustment mechanism was still in your workspace. So somewhere between the front of the gun and your armpit, you know what I mean? Cool, go ahead and get it on the table. So um, some of those popular ones, they've got a lot of moving parts and uh, springs in them, and so the springs can rust and fail. If you've ever been to the range, especially from uh, high level and uh, high uh, end and capacity users, you'll see knots tied into the tail because the spring will break, and then all of a sudden it zip, zips right out, and so they have to tie a knot in the sling to keep it from uh, inadvertently adjusting. Um, some of the other tail slings on the market, they use off-the-shelf hardware, which is not designed at all for that purpose. And so while it might adjust easily and uh, pretty well in one direction, when you go to tighten up or loosen up uh, the opposite direction, um, it's just isn't designed that work that way. So it might be too stiff or too loose. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly, we made the two ends, uh, the tail and the adjustment piece, two entirely different components, so they feel different. So even in the dark, uh, under nods, whatever, you can tell the difference between the end of the tail and the adjustment mechanism. Chris, as a trainer, how do you feel about the uh, y'all's new sling? I mean, I know we talked about it a little bit yesterday, and I know you're not gonna say, oh, 
you know, this is, it's, it's your product. Yeah. But uh, share your opinion with us. The, the concept of a tail sling is, is absolutely valid. It's verified. It's been used to great success over the last 15, 18 years, you know. Um, they work great. We have legions of users that love them, which is why we decided to get into the game and make a tail sling. So I think with Steven's team, they sought out like, okay, well, how do we improve the tail part, you know, and the mechanism to at which it adjusts, which I think we absolutely did that with this model. Um, the worst thing about some tail slings I've used before is again, that tail can turn into a piece of foreign debris that's now in your workspace, you're trying to work the gun, your equipment, things like that. So the way that Steven d devised this thing is the material is a lot less uh, likely to get where it shouldn't be, uh, mostly due to its form factor. And then the end of it, where it stops is kind of the same same way. They designed some stuff in there that says, you know, it, we're hoping that this doesn't find its way into places it shouldn't be uh, while you're manipulating the sling, which is, you know, trigger wells, magazine wells, empty pistol holsters, um, things like that. You know. Two most important questions anytime we do any show. How much is it going to cost? When's it coming out? Hit me. So um, these will be priced similarly to our uh, our you know, very well-known Vickers sling. I believe retail on these is right around $50 uh, for the one and a quarter inch model. Uh, you know, maybe five bucks less for the one inch model. Um, and we plan to launch these actually, hopefully this quarter, but at worst case scenario, second quarter of 2021. Okay, great. Well, I mean, this, I know I'm excited. I mean, slings, I think are, are a little bit underrated, perhaps the most underrated accessory, I would think for a rifle. Everybody thinks about the badass optic that they're gonna get or, you know, buying a piss load of magazines and then they're running around and got no sling on the gun. You know, it makes virtually zero sense. And, you know, we filmed some yesterday. We we're actually going to be bringing like a little special, like how to use your sling that we shot in collaboration with you boys. Looking forward to bringing that to the TFB TV audience. But in the meantime, thank you guys so much for coming out to GunFest 2021. And thanks for showing us thank your you. new products. Thanks we're going to be guys. bringing you guys more from GunFest 2021. We've got a few other products that we're going to look at with Blue Force Gear. Take care.